hey hi everyone welcome to this video today in this video we are going to see something about event rules and the alert binding to the CIs okay and we are going to do the CI binding at an database level which is hosted on a Windows machine and what we are going to use uh, for the CI binding so as you know, there are multiple ways to do CI binding. One is out of the box way where the CI binding always by default happens on the CMDB CI hardware level, right? But in this case, we are going to override that default binding and we are going to use something called as CI field matching. matching. And we are going to do a CI binding at a database level. And we are going to follow this approach to bind the CI running on a host. So this particular, uh, uh, CI is running on a Windows host. I will show you the service which I will be using for this example. And this is the service where we are going to do the alert binding uh, with the CI at this level. This is the date. If you see the details of this, mm, I'm going to quickly show you. This is an Oracle database. Okay. And it is hosted on this particular Windows server. So we are going to show you how to do this there can be a case in your organization where you need to do this before i go there if you want to see how to do ci binding at a hardware level at an application web server level please visit my channel on youtube those videos are available there let's move ahead so i'm going to use this particular uh, json message to do the ci binding and you can see the node name is this and the windows host name is in the description we are going to fetch this out from description put it into some arbitrary variable which can be used in the uh, event rule now the interesting part here is if you see this transfer uh, so the basically before going there i will show you the event rule which i created source name and the filter resources plunk and the most interesting part is here so to do ci field mapping ci binding uh, what you have to do is you have to map the node name to the host name on which that database is hosted. So what I did, I went to this description, I selected this and then I created this expression host underscore name and it can be simply create, you can simply create it by selecting this and then putting the expression name. Okay, now once you do that, what you have to do is you have to just pull this like this and put it here okay once that is done you can see the strange part is this node field is not used here anywhere but still the ci binding will happen at this node level okay now once so so it's mandatory that you know you have to provide the node as uh, the host name on which the database server is hosted. If you do like this, then it won't work. It will not bind the uh, CI properly at an intended level. So let's go to the CI binding rule again, which I sh just showed you. And you can read this properly where it says uh, the node should be, the node field should be populated with the default binding. And that's the reason I wanted to use the default binding to populate the node field. I did this. And what ServiceNow will do is it will automatically go into your additional uh, uh, information field, this field, and it will try to match the applications, the databases which are hosted on this particular uh, Windows server. So it will take this name, this node name, basically, and it will try to map it with the upstream relationships. Uh, and then if it finds a match, it will automatically bind the alert to that particular CI. Okay, to show you this, I'm going to send an event to service now. The event is created. Let's go and see that event. You can see this. I'm going to open this and the alert is created. Okay, before showing you the alert, I'm going to go through this processing notes. So you can see the event rule applied. The name of the event rule is, which I showed you, my demo seven. Now you can see the processing nodes carefully. It will first find the node 
um, by using the node name that is win under win dash 2020 and then it will go and check the applications that are running on that node okay and if it finds the match with the node with with this particular node in this particular table then it is going to use that CI and do the binding okay let's go to the alert now here it will get more clear you can see this alert the node is nothing but the host underscore name variable which we fetched here this one right and the configuration item is this this is the database and this is passed on the events node field so that is the beauty of this a particular event rule where you can do the binding properly with this node but alert on alert this this is not the node the node is this okay let's go to the service map and here now you can see in detail that the event is properly uh, converted into an alert and the, that alert is properly bind binded with the proper CI if you want to see the alert I can show you the alert sorry yeah you can see this alert is binded with this and here is the configuration item field so there are multiple ways how we can do the CI binding I have created multiple videos for those please visit my YouTube channel and you will see all those videos i have also commit, uh, created community articles with the proper use cases in depth explanation and a particular pdf file attached to that article keep following keep, keep suggesting and i will keep improving thank you so much for watching this video have a nice day